Hey there folks, Gary Bradley here and in this episode I'm going to show you how you can replace the screen on a device in an image with one of your choosing. So in the first example, uh, a nice relatively straightforward top-down view. So we need to do two things, we need to match the rotation and we need to match the scale of the screen as well. So no perspectives or anything like that to, to kind of have to contend with. So I need some artwork and to do that I'll go to file and then I'll choose place linked. Mainly because the artwork I'm going to bring in as you can see here by the imaginative file name, Mockup iPad is a mockup of a, a website uh, for an iPad scale size. And um, if I import that via place linked, I can make edits to this original website design and they will then be pushed into this destination file with the iPad itself on. So if I choose place, uh, and there it is inside of a transform box. And I know that I want to obviously rotate this. So I'm going to pick one corner of this artwork to position in the right place according to where the iPad screen is. So it's going to be the bottom left corner. So I'll drag that, hover my cursor in there, and then I'll hover over and then use my scroll wheel to zoom in and get a nice clear view of this and then drag it into position. You could always use the cursor keys to fine tune that. Now, I know that obviously now, as you will probably have identified, that the bottom left side of my artwork is level with the bottom left side of the iPad screen. So that's a great place to start rotating from. Now, to do that, Obviously, I need to go up to the options bar up at the top, turn on the option to uh, then reveal the reference point. And if I just pin down the bottom left corner of the bounding box on this now, you might just notice there is a fulcrum there. This is where the artwork is now going to be anchored down in place. So I can then zoom back out to get a better view of the whole screen. And then if I go up to the angle value at the top up here, you can uh, use the scrubby value. You don't have to keep typing numbers in there. Just hover my cursor over the angle value in there and drag across. You can um, drag to the left hand side to be uh, to rotate counterclockwise. You can drag to the right hand side to go uh, clockwise. But if you hold down the shift key and drag, you can rotate around much, much quicker. So I'm going to try and match the angle inside of here uh, just a little bit more. Like so. I think that's about right. And then zoom in a touch and then go to the scale options. Now they're linked in here. So again, I can hover my cursor over the widget in there and I could scrubby scale up and down just by dragging left and right, left mouse button in there. So hovering over that, uh, yeah, about 95% looks about right. So I'm happy with the angle and the scale inside of there. When I'm done, click on the tick and that will then finally import the artwork in there. So there we have it. That's how you can match the screen just with a simple rotation. Now. I obviously realized that the artwork in this case was the right kind of ratio. I and mean, that partly is due to the fact that it's a website mock-up. And so the sizes were set up exactly right anyway. So it was set up for an iPad screen. You might have to use a technique like a layer mask to hide bits. If they overlap the screen, it doesn't quite fit the ratio. That's a little bit of extra work you might have to do. But in this case, it works fairly well. One last step that I will take then is if I just pull the layers panel out here, this is my newly imported artwork with the link symbol in here telling us that it's linked to an external piece of saved artwork somewhere else. But with that layer active, if I go down to effects, I can choose in a shadow. And then from here, just make sure that I can see the artwork and the dialog box options in here. And it's a case of just then really um, increasing the opacity to start off with. Making sure the blend mode at the top as it should be by default is set to multiply. Make sure it's uh, set to a dark color in there. And then I'll increase the size. And as I do, you'll then see this shadow appear. Now, obviously that's way, way too much, but at least we can see something. Now, the whole purpose of this is to try and make it look like the artwork is set back from a piece of glass that's maybe in front of it. So it's just to give a little bit of depth in there. That is all that it's for really, just to trick the eye into making it look a little bit more realistic. And um, yeah, with that done, the, the size of the, of the inner shadow and the opacity in there, I'm happy with that. I'll click OK and you see it adds it in there. So you could at any point turn that off and then click back next to the word in a shadow to add it back in again there like so. So that's the first one. Nice and relatively straightforward. And if I want to make edits then to the original artwork, all you have to do is take your cursor down, hover it over the thumbnail of the linked smart object and double left click. And you can see here, this is the original file now in a tab of its own here, mockup iPad.psd. And if, for example, I was to change the color of something in here, so let's have a look at this one here, like the book now button in there. So if I click on that, 
then change the color here to something a little bit different like a, a green there we go wow uh, file and then choose save as soon as it saved those edits i can then click on the tab for the destination file and there we have it it's updated in there so it's a great way to build a mock-up and then go back and make tweaks to the original artwork it saves you having to alter the design and re-import and rematch the screen over and over again so yeah now obviously this image is slightly more challenging we've got a perspective to work to and also the screen is blurred as well there's only a very narrow amount of focal point across that screen those two things have to be matched i'll use the same technique i'll go to the file menu and then go down to place linked to import my uh, macbook artwork in here again it's the same mock-up of the same website and if ever possible i'd always suggest try and find a corner of your artwork to match the corner of the screen device that you are trying to replace so in this case it's the top right hand side i'm going to go for could have been the bottom right hand side um, but essentially a corner that's going to stay on screen the whole time and then from here i am actually going to click on the tick because i can then as a separate edit go up to edit go down to transform and then i can choose one of the options in here now notice that there is one called perspective which would seem to be the logical option now in this case i find it a little bit over engineered a little bit too fussy so let me just show you why so if i click on perspective what it will do is you can take your cursor to any one of the corner handles and you can drag it away from the center of that edge and it will increase but it will increase at both the bottom and the top and then you'll have to hover your cursor over the middle handle which allows you to move that up and down and you can go to the opposite side and you can pull the screen down and then hover over the corner click and drag and as i pull away from the middle it will scale the screen up i just find this a little bit fiddly and a bit unnecessary so i'm going to click on the cancel button up at the top you could click on you could hit the escape key if you wanted to same thing but i'll go to edit this time go back to transform and i'll choose distort and I'm going to go uh, hover over the bottom left corner this time hold down the shift key because unlike the perspective option which won't let your cursor move left or right in this case I'll have to hold down the shift key so that I can only drag this up and down not left and right because that's going to ruin the whole thing hover my cursor over the bottom right corner again hold down the shift key drag down and I'm just trying to match the angle of the screen in here well really sort the size to start off with so with that done that's not bad for now i will then hover over the transform box right click and i can then jump across to skew now this is one way you'd usually hover your cursor over the middle handle on any edge and then drag left or right in this case to just pull the screen along like so and with that done i'm just going to zoom into the corner down here because it does need scaling a little bit more so i'm going to right click on the transform box again choose scale I'm going to hold down the shift key just to make sure that I pull that out. I can obviously then let go of the mouse and then click and drag back in here to move the whole thing around to reposition. And then just make sure that it looks as though it's covered the original screen and that the angle looks okay. I might need to just right click down here and then choose uh, distort once more. Just drag that just to make sure. Yeah, it is. It just needs to be pulled up just a touch in there like so i think with that done i'm fairly happy with that for now and then i'll click on the tick now obviously if this was a live project for a commercial piece you'd want to spend a little bit more time just adjusting how the screen fits and, and fine tuning but i don't want to bore you with all of that you know use the same techniques that i've looked at here and then making sure that as you can see here in the layers panel my new artwork is active in the layers panel then go up to the filter menu go down to blur gallery and then choose tilt shift so tilt shift will allow you to keep one area which is the center bit in between the two solid lines in focus and then from the solid line to the dashed line that's where the blur starts and it increases until it reaches the dashed line and that's when it has its maximum blur amount applied to it anything beyond the dashed line is then fully blurred so you've got to match the angle in here and the size that you want the area to be in focus so at this moment in time then um, I'm going to increase the blur now you could do that on the widget so you could go to the widget here in the middle which allows you to move the whole tilt shift blur filter as well but you'd, you'd hover over there and you drag and you pull that around in there like so and you can increase the blur by dragging that dial around clockwise or reducing the blur by dragging it counterclockwise for now I'm happy that I can see enough blur in there so what I really need to do is rotate this so I hover my cursor over one of the blue pins 
and drag clockwise so I kind of roughly match the angle of the screen in there. Now, it will scale as it becomes close to the camera on the left-hand side. So it's, we're only going to be able to do this roughly speaking in here. Now I need to move it. So I want to get where the pin is in the middle here into my focal point, which is around about here. So it was this portion of the screen that was in focus in the original and then it blurs out. So from here, I'm just going to reduce the amount of the screen that's in focus just by hovering over that solid line and dragging it with the mouse, pulling this one in as well. And then I probably for this design want to make sure that I just make sure that the title on the web page is in focus and then probably go back to this handle here and just stretch it out a touch. We want the blur in there and it's you know, that is necessary to make it match with the original artwork, but we don't want to lose everything on the web page in there. So I'm just going to pull this out a little bit and just a bit here. And then I might go back to one of the pins and just try and rotate it a little bit more to match this part of the screen a bit better now. So yeah, we've got the blur in there added. We've got the focal point in here and then it slowly starts to blur out across the screen in there. Now I might just go to the blur value and increase that a little bit more. I think with that, that is about as much as we're going to probably get away with. So um, with that done, I'll go up to the top and the final thing is to click on high quality to uh, obviously get no, a higher quality end result, but you do that right at the end so that you're not burdened by um, this taking longer to update every time you make an edit. So with that done, click on OK and that applies it. So in here then you'll notice that that's applied to our layer. The blur gallery option in there doesn't tell you the individual name, which was tilt shift for hours, but you can turn it off. You can re-edit that by double left clicking on blur gallery. And then we've got just this area of the screen up here is very much in focus. Now, if, if you're happy with the amount of blur that's on there, fine. If the fact that the top of the screen in here is still in focus and it ought to really be a little bit blurred at the top in there and possibly at the bottom, you could add a second pass of blur gallery in there. So I'm going to go and make sure that my layer's active. I'm going to go up to the filter menu and this time go down to blur gallery, but this time I'm going to choose field blur. So it will keep the original one on its screen. And now what it does is it gives us a widget. And in here, this defines how much blur there is. So over all of the image, there is a small amount of blur. Now I'm just going to reduce that down to zero, which seems kind of pointless to start off with. But if I hover my cursor over the pin in the middle, I'm going to drag that to here. That will make sure that the middle of the screen in here is still in focus. And then what I can do is hover my cursor at the very top up here and left click and I can add another pin that will add blur. So you can pull that away up to the top. You can reduce the amount of blur that's assigned to that one, but it just allows us to keep the middle of the screen in focus, but just blur the top in there. So it may well be that I've just grabbed that pin and move that one up to the top a little bit just to keep as much of the original screen in focus. But we still want to keep this bit blurred up at the top in there. So just dragging this down a bit. I want to get away from that really hard edge at the top up there. Pull this one down a touch like so. And then I've got that. That title in there is nice and still clear in there, which is good. I can go down to the bottom click and add another pin, make sure that one is set to have no blur set to it, and then add another pin down at the bottom in here, and that one will have blur applied to it. So we get rid of that very hard edge along the bottom in there like so. So you've got two pins in the middle which have no blur applied to them. It keeps that area in focus, but we're just blurring at the top up in there, and it's a non-destructive way of doing that. So if that's one of the extra steps you want to take, that is what you can do. So with that done, again, I'll click on high quality, and then click on OK. So that is how you replace artwork on a screen device in a photograph with your own. As always, folks, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, and don't forget, if you want to see more videos in the future, save time, create killer artwork, then I post a video here every Friday. You can also click on the bell to get alerts every time I post on here as well. And until next time, farewell.